All eyes tonight are on Ohio's capital city, where two teams have emerged as truly elite. First, the high-flying Cougars of BYU going for their fourth title as they take on the tough Rainbow Warriors of the University of Hawaii, hoping to punch their way to a national title. And welcome live to The Ohio State University as ESPN proudly presents the NCAA Volleyball Championship. A matchup of the number one and two seeds at the University of Hawaii versus the Cougars of BYU, meeting for the very first time in tournament competition. And this one is for it all. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Paul Sunderland, my partner, as always, and dear friend. Good to see you, Kevin Barnett, All-American at Pepperdine University, two-time Olympian. We've been waiting for this matchup. Everybody that's been following men's college volleyball the last couple of years anticipated this. They're obviously very, very close in level of play, but, but what decides the championship? And maybe more importantly, if an individual does, who are those players? Listen, this is a heavyweight title fight for more than a calendar year. These have been the two best teams. These are the two best teams in the tournament. No doubt. It's going to come down to serve and pass. Simple stuff from both sides, but also opposite play. Gabby Garcia Fernandez, a legitimate international arm. He has a future in volleyball. He's learned a little stuff. You see that. Play defense inside, move to the outside, still get the heat on the ball. It's his footwork that has improved, his vision that has improved, and his arm, it was already great. It's only gotten better. From the service line, he may determine this match by himself. On the other side, Pat Gaston, when they met the last time and it went five in Hawaii, it was him with a 19-17 finishing ace. Well, in the semifinals, it was his blocking that was center stage for much of it. He shut down the Gauchos, and also he had a ton of kills. He was efficient in the middle. That tells you the team is passing well. If he goes off the same way he did in the semis, he could be MVP and an NCAA championship to Hawaii. Gassman, as you mentioned, was very big last, in March of 2020. 10 kills on 16 swings, no errors the other night against UC Santa Barbara. And this is why everybody was looking forward to and anticipating this rematch. BYU and the University of Hawaii, number one and two seeds, ranked number one and two virtually all season long. And now we have finally come to the moment where the champion of the NCAA in 2021 will be decided. Will it be BYU or the University of Hawaii? Two teams, one trophy for the championship. And welcome inside the Cavelli Center here on the campus of The Ohio State University. Best three out of five sets for the national championship between BYU and Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. 40th meeting all time. We'll get into some of the history. BYU has had the better of it. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. And Kevin, 14 players on here, including the Libros. You talked about some of the absolute stars in Gassman along with Gabby Garcia Fernandez, but another player for each team that really might go a long way in deciding it. Davide Gardini, the outside hitter number one for BYU, international legend. His father and his son is starting to live up to that legacy. On the other side, Arado Parapunov, the opposite left hand. Last time the teams met, 30 kills in that match. He was terrific. He's coming off two underperforming matches. I would look for him to get the ball at least three or four times in perfect situations to start this match. In the first 10 points, he ought to get some good chances. There is Davide Gardini, six foot nine junior out of Ravenna, Italy, and the aforementioned Rado Karapunov, also six foot nine, a senior out of Sofia, Bulgaria, and both of them will be representing their nations internationally for a long time to come. There's Charlie Wade in his 12th season, also participated in the last national championship final in 2019 when he was the national coach of the year when the Rainbow Warriors lost three sets to none in Long Beach to the 49ers. Hawaii as the higher seed by one spot will be the home team and wearing their white uniforms. People in the volleyball world said I've waited two years for this match. Consensus one and two. Those matchups that happened in Hawaii, night number one, Hawaii was carrying a 25 match home winning streak. BYU blanked them three straight and quick. It was a kind of a brutal ending to what had been a terrific run. 
The next night was that one that went five. It was 15, 17, 20 in the first evening. Then BYU won the first two. Hawaii came back, won the next three. Pat Gassman right there. Career high five aces, nine total for the team. Serve and pass will be critical tonight, especially early to set the tone. One of a handful of players that can, in the words of their head coaches, go off and dominate a match. Jakob Tele, starting setter for Hawaii, and we are underway. Nice dig in the deep cross court by Chaz Galloway. And immediately a big block out of the middle. There's a lot of foreign influence in this game. Six foot nine graduate out of Finland, Mikki Jakiainen getting the stuff blocked. 27 blocks in that last match as well. And I like the aggressive swing from Colton Calder. I like him going for it. I think you need to come out and play free to start this match. Jakiainen, who was uh, awarded the Elite 90 award for the top academic performer in the national semifinals for the second time. He's a computer science engineering major. Oh, another roof. Three-man block, and BYU says, not this time. Hawaii's getting a little bit of their own medicine from the semis when they stuck the Gauchos off the floor for the beginning and middle part of that match. Working that three-man made a difference. You saw Gabby get there and get straight over. Not only did he get there, but he is well over. He's not late. He is on time with that high ball. BYU is really big and physical right across the dial. That's a nice sign. And a good look by Hawaii's Chaz Galloway, high-flying freshman out of San Diego. Charlie Wade told us that he was going to go to that early. And the reason it's effective is because you know in the scouting report, Patrick has carried a ton of attention. Pat Gassman in the middle. You have Chaz Galloway over the top end. That's a perfect combination. Chaz Galloway jumping near 50 inches. That's going to be four contacts, and the service winner goes to Colton Cal, 6'1", senior out of Maui. He's a senior, but he's been at Hawaii when we talked to him at practice today. He's been on campus playing for the Rainbow Warriors since 1516. Came on as a walk-in, grew up in Maui, and had to commute to either the Big Island of Kona or to Honolulu, Oahu, in order to play junior volleyball. He was offered no scholarships, and now he's an All-American and a key component to this Hawaii team. Now, at one point he was told he could redshirt or get cut. Your choice. <laughs> and do you want to leave or do you want to play? He stuck around, and it's a good thing for Hawaii fans. Colton's been nothing short of outstanding at that outside hitting position. And this is Hawaii. You can go to Gasman anytime. He's so big, it takes a commit to stop him. And BYU is a read team. By that, I mean, they're going to wait till the quick is set. They're not going to just jump with him. Service error, but a pretty nice run by Cal. He's speaking of Gasman, six foot ten out of Clovis, California. Twice a second team All American. Moved one up this year, first teamer. He hits 509. That is just unstoppable kind of numbers. There is Gabby Garcia Fernandez, 6'7 senior out of Puerto Rico, and he misses that one long. Now you need to watch the surface reception of BYU in this match because this is the toughest challenge they've faced all year, UH, from the service line. And for UH, they have a history with BYU. They've got those aces. BYU has a history here at Ohio State being served off the court by Nicholas Scherzen and the like, losing back-to-back -back national titles to the home side one time and then again at Penn State. Easy serve by Gasman, and the ball run right down the pipe that time by Davide Gardini. Both teams said they were going to go to this more than they had planned. And in fact, it was noted by UH that BYU has not set as much bick or middle back quick attack as they have in previous years. And then we got told, well, we're going to set more bick out of the back row. Zach Eschenberg, six foot six graduate student out of Newberry Park, California, back to serve. And once again, BYU moving the scoreboard. I thought Jakob Tele set a top shelf match yes. a couple of nights ago. He was really good, not only with his choices and his location, but occasional fakes. He is left handed, he can turn and swing. But he had all around one of his better matches of the year. Tele again, six foot six sophomore out of Norway. Had three, assi three aces in that match, 32 assists, and was pretty aggressive offensively as well. A lot of service errors early, sign of nerves by both teams. Everybody's got to go for it. They yeah. know they have to go for it. There was Felipe Gibrito Ferreira, six foot nine senior out of Brazil. 
Oh, that's a really smart shot by Colton Cowell going against the grain. Yeah, and anytime you can tip to the middle, it's a smart shot. Sorry, Mills. Well, actually, I'm not. You don't be the middle of the court. No, no, the middle blocker. If you can tip towards the middle blocker, you're doing all right. It's a good move. Yeah, that is a smart play. Seventh NCAA tournament appearance all time for Hawaii runners up in 2019 and 1996. Chance to extend their lead. Parapunov risked away into the cross court for the kill. Uh, one more follow up on the service reception of BYU, which so struggled a number of years ago in the championship final. Sean Olmstead said, Look, we did not have a Nicholas Scherzen type person in our gym. Well, now you do. So you see those serves every day. He expects it not to be an issue. Pretty tough serve there. They ran their offense anyway, did BYU. But still, Hawaii with the transfer. Galloway again. Over. Uh, that's a three meter line violation by number five in blue. Garcia Fernandez going to take off completely behind the three meter line. And Hawaii out to the quick 8 5 lead. There's Sean Olmstead now in his sixth year, fourth championship match. Once as the BYU women's head coach in 2014, and as you mentioned, the two losses to Ohio State 16 17, and now in 2021. Not having much success going high flat. Off speed shot. That's gobbled up easily. Bardini went down. We saw that a lot the other night. Obviously, he's got a lot of international experience. You mentioned the tradition, how great his father was. Three times Andrea Gardini, three times uh, world champion, and three times an Olympian. He is uh, slam dinking that ball, trying to get it to the floor, and brought on the net violation. Yeah, Gage Worsley was reading that. Definitely was there. Popped it a little too far. But negating it was the net violation. I thought Worsley also played to the top of his capability on the semifinal. Oh, Both teams really moving the ball around a lot. That's a nice stuff. <laughs> and Colton Cal. Nice pose. And Colton Cal told us earlier today. He said, "Look, if I don't play volleyball." past the University of Hawaii, I'm going to take up powerlifting. <laughs> yeah, there's no one stronger on the floor than Colton Cal. He said he played over 200 pounds, like 198 to 200. A couple years ago, said it was too much. He's down to about 183 for volleyball. On a 6-1 frame, kid's a moose. This is a really good start for Hawaii. Off the inside hand of the block, number five, Garcia Fernandez with another kill. I thought both setters played well in the semifinal. Yeah. Will Stanley delivering that ball for BYU. Number three in blue, and he did a nice job. He actually we used to be teammates with Colton Powell on the other side, both growing up in Hawaii, played on the same club team. Hawaii's doing a nice job defensively against the hitters for BYU. I'll give you those numbers in just a second. Parapunov with his second kill, number 19 in white. And that's a good sign for Hawaii that Parapunov is getting some scoring early. I said you wanted to see him in a Perfect opportunity. This is not quite perfect, but almost. In today's volleyball, even if you pass on the 10-foot line, you can generally run quick. I'd like anything 10-foot and in as an in-system ball for UH and getting Parapunov off early. And Tele misses that ball just out of bounds. Mentioned, Kevin, that Hawaii was doing a nice job against BYU. BYU on the season hits 348. So far, three of nine, only one error, 222. And Hawaii right on schedule at 357. He Einan back to serve. Oh, that ball's blocked straight down. What's the difference? Rotation number one, Parapunov hitting out on the left side instead of his preferred right. Yeah, and he also ended up outside the antenna a little bit. That's the middle set in the ball. This is a tough situation because BYU, look how much they work to get in that three man. And it's not a bad swing from Parapunov. He tried to hit that line. He's not going into the meat of the block. He's going towards the edge. It's just a better move from BYU. Both of these teams exceptional in all phases, as you might imagine. I'll give you the blocking numbers in a moment. Nice shot. Yeah, that balls down. to the floor. Yeah, no question about it. And a pretty good start for Chaz Galloway, who struggled against UC Santa Barbara in the semifinals. Only three of 13 with four errors, so he hit negative. Keys for Hawaii. They need some left side production out of Galloway. They did not get it a couple nights ago, as you just mentioned. 
They need to keep serving tough. They've been doing that, and they also need their opposite to go off. So far for Hawaii, they've executed everything that would equal a national title for them. Perfect pass, pretty tight set. Nice block deflection again by Hawaii. And that ball is into the antenna, out of play, and Karapunov is stuffed that time through. Sometimes you look at championship matchups before they start, and you think, okay, we have 60% chance of this being great, 40% chance of a blowout, or maybe it's even the reverse of that. In this one, I think it's a 90% chance, 85-90, that you have a terrific competitive match. That's what we've had thus far, halfway through set one. Oh, what a pass. Heavyweight fight, two very evenly matched teams duking it out from the service line. The speed gun isn't working. They had the miles per hour up in the semifinals, and after I saw that serve from Garcia Fernandez, I'm looking and it, it's not working. Maybe somebody broke it. Hawaii leading 12-10, opening set for the 2021 National Championships. Here comes Gassman. Eschenberg going off speed, but rejected again. Both teams good in the blocking phase early. No surprise there. They're both amongst the elite in the nation in terms of blocking, and it showed both the matchup against Santa Barbara, but also on the Lewis side for BYU in that semifinal. ball will drift just over the end line. Given the early serving numbers, that is the fourth service error for Hawaii. Only one so far for BYU. And Zach Eschenberg will go back to serve. His wife, Kennedy, one of the stars on BYU women's team, had another very nice run into the NCAA tournament this year. That was won by Kentucky, their first championship. Boy, Hawaii is just passing, passing nails right now. That's bad for BYU. That allows Hawaii to run their speed and athleticism on the pins, and they're opening stuff up with the middle, too. Getting both their middles early opportunities. That's the thing of beauty in front of a two-man block. Guillerme Vos with that crush straight to the floor. Really good passing by Hawaii, and that ball is served out of bounds, making it 14-12. Yeah, Hawaii's keeping it close with the service errors, because I think they would keep scoring in transition. But Sean Olmstead will tell you, look, he coached women's. He said in women's volleyball, you never miss a serve. In men's volleyball, you have to miss serve, because the risk is needed to keep teams off the net. Fifth service error, so five of BYU's 12 points are on those service errors from Hawaii. And back and forth we go. We have come to the media timeout opening set here in Columbus, Ohio for the national championship. And it is Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Lots of fans made that long nine hour plane trip to come support their team. They're up 15-12. There is Brigham Young University head coach Sean Olmstead in his sixth year. Played in a couple of national championship matches for BYU and now he is coaching in his fourth overall four-time Mountain Pacific Sports Federation Coach of the Year and four times they have been the champions of the conference. Coming out of the media timeout, Chaz Galloway, the high flyer back to serve with Hawaii off to a really good start, leading 15-12. Wonderful dig by Galloway, given an opportunity, looking high flat. Off speed again, Hawaii is there. Did Worsley get that ball? No, even in front of Gage Worsley, one of the top Liberos in the country, year in, year out, wearing number six in the dark jersey. So give the kill to number five, Garcia Fernandez. And the reason that's going to work is because Gabby will hit the ball and it will go 10 feet off the end line. So you as a defender have to be back for that touch off the block. You're probably not going to have too many clean dig opportunities against him, but he gives him a lot of floor to work with, sure. Will Stanley, star setter for BYU. And speaking of volleyball families, he comes from one. His father, John Stanley, also went to BYU and is in the International Volleyball Hall of Fame and a two-time Olympian all the way back in 68 and 72. And he's got a couple of brothers that are pretty good as well. His stepbrother, Clay Stanley, was the MVP of the 2008 Olympics when the United States won gold over Brazil. Uh, Steve is medium. <laughs> now, Clay Stanley was the most fearsome server on the planet for a number of years. Good block touch again. 
right back at you. What a dig by Eschenberg. Oh, that's a wonderful swing. Over the top of the block and in front of Galloway, a very good young defender. Zach Eschenberg making a play to keep that alive, that rally so Will Stanley could deliver the ball to the outside for Gabby here. I mean, that was a monster swing over the top right on the end line. That is how you do it, no matter the level. Now, Will Stanley coming from that volleyball family, that volleyball experience. I love his competitiveness, and I love his jump serve. He's a guy who can add from the back line. Overpass could be trouble, and it is indeed. Mickey Yahiainen with the tap down. And here comes BYU back within one. Talked about the two setters, uh, John, excuse me, Will Stanley along with Jakob Tele. And uh, Stanley coming from a wonderful volleyball family, both he and his brother, John, are playing in this championship match together. And the father, John Stanley, has come all the way from Hawaii to watch his sons compete for a national championship. BYU back within one. First team All-American setter out of Honolulu is Will Stanley. You also see his brother, John, who came in and is a very crafty server as well. He plays at the outside hitting position. We mentioned Father John Sr. here as well. And you saw Clay Stanley, teammate of yours back in Athens. You saw him in Honolulu recently. Yep, just saw him there. His young family is doing well. Enjoying the post-volleyball existence. Not quite as much as the volleyball existence, but good to see Clay. He was an unreal player for years, oh. developed, and he was a guy who left early, built himself up internationally, didn't come out of college as the guy you thought was going to be an MVP in 2008 of the planet, of the world, of the Olympics, built himself into that through hard work. It helps to be 6'10", 260 as well. And have a great arm. Colton Cowell with a nice push off the edge of the block, saving that. That ball was set way too tight right back at you. Man, there are going to be some bombs going off at the Cavelli Center tonight. That is Eschenberg once again, 11 kills in their semifinal win over Lewis. And as much as we talked about BYU, Zach Eschenberg tends to get a little overlooked. Their number 11 doesn't help. He wears all black lycra, so you can hardly see him. But he's gone to that look because he wants to stay warm. Eschenberg, I think this is where BYU has the advantage. I think Eschenberg probably gets more kills than the outsides on the other side as that triple ace goes down. And we're tied. The slightest margin between these two teams, ranked number one and number two. A fortuitous serve off the top of the tape. Taylan Jonathan Tufuga in to serve. Didn't see him in the semifinals. Nice pass by Worsley. Wow, that is a really good sign. Colton Cal getting a lot of sets. Is he getting too many? He's already got 11, but he's been productive. Yeah, you wouldn't say too many if he's putting every ball away. <laughs> I like that angle from Colton. That's a nice turn. And I think the BYU block well overran the ball. Fourth kill on 11 swings. Hawaii hitting 360. BYU moving up now at 278. Hawaii getting a lot of block touches, but that ball put away out of the middle by number 16, Felipe. Gibrito Ferreira out of Brazil. Do the middle blockers for BYU need to be more involved in the offense? They hit for a tremendous percentage, don't get that many opportunities. Well, you're going to have to pass the ball to make that happen. I like a middle that's involved. I think we, we talk about that 08 team from the United States. The genius of that was that they were able to stay in system so much. They were able to make Ryan Millar and David Lee weapons throughout that tournament, a complete tournament. They played with two smaller outside hitters in Riley Salmon and Reed Pretty. Not the biggest guys, but when you're in system all the time, those guys are hitting fastballs, your middles are killing. That's how you win matches. That's how you win medals. Reed Pretty was a mighty might at six foot six and a high flyer. Timeout called. The BYU fans wanted a double contact on that gaff set by Parapunov, letting them play, and that ball was hit out of bounds. Let's take a look at the bracket, how these teams got here. Hawaii, hard-fought match over UC Santa Barbara, which won the uh, Big West postseason tournament. That was in Hawaii, and mention that because Hawaii is 16-1 and one on the year. Abbreviated schedule because of COVID, but their only loss was in that tournament at home to UCSD, where BYU, the number two seed, is taking out a very good team, the Flyers from Lewis University. Three sets to one to set up this championship. I can't believe he gave Reed Pretty 6-6. Six, six. 
Six four on his best day. He 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 swore to me he was six foot six. No. <laughs> he's he's full of it if he did. All right. All right. It's good to have fans in the stadium. It is. It Players is. have spent the entire season without fans. Of course, what an advantage that would have been for Hawaii, who was hosting that Big West tournament. They would have sold that thing out at 10,300 at the Stan Sheriff Center. So a lot of the fans traveling here to support the team if they have any tie at all to the group. 65th meeting all time. Told you that these two outstanding programs, two of the tops in college volleyball, certainly over the last quarter century, last meeting was that historic matchup back to back, March 5th and 6th in Honolulu. Hawaii coming back and taking the second contest, 1917, in the fifth. Yeah, they won three straight to win that one. Yeah, Parapunov, that's a nice comeback after dealing with a couple of pretty inaccurate sets. And I agree with you that Jakob Tele was right on target against UCSB in the semifinal the other day. Maybe off to a little bit of a ragged start right now. Uh, UH just needs to serve in a little bit more. I like the pressure, but you're going to have to balance. Spiros Hakas on to serve now for Hawaii. And off the pipe, that ball missed out of bounds. And Sean Olmstead talked to us about that particular play where Gardini struggles a little bit. He said he was running to the ball. You need to go slow to fast to attack the ball effectively, but the ball is set so fast, players will run at it many times, and you end up with that flat swing. Rather than slow to fast, elevate and snap over the top. Gardini just two kills so far on seven attempts, and they're working him in the service phase. Free ball coming to Hawaii. Vos out of the middle, nice cross body by the Brazilian middle blocker wearing number 21. Those are the points you have to convert. You're gonna win a national title. When you get handed a free ball, that should be red meat to you. Pull it off the bone. Very rare red meat, just go, go right with it. Timeout is called by BYU. Hawaii on top 21-19. The NCAA Spring Championship season is upon us. Watch NCAA live streams from men's and women's division one and two college sports championships. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Opening set, best three out of five here in Columbus for the 2021 national champion the last national championship actually it was back to back won by long beach state university in 2018 and 19 there was no tournament in 2020 because of covid when the season was called off and the last match these two teams played was the last match of the 2020 men's volleyball season and here they are playing for the championship and nobody's surprised yeah i think right now if you're uh you know that those early service errors five of them in total but most of them coming early to about the 10 point mark in this set you could be up even two more so they served in with a little bit of heat they're winning the rallies they're getting touches they're lethally efficient in transition this is a perfect start for uh leading 21 to 19 hitting 357 parapunov off to a good start as is colton cal and guillerme voss going to him even more he's three of four Oh, what a dig. Nicely done, but a net violation. Oh, it was called against BYU. It was the middle attacker. It was Gibrito Ferreira that got a piece of the net, so that's a break for Hawaii. Yeah, bad timing for BYU on that one now, 22-19. Talk about the international flavor. You have a Brazilian middle blocker going against another Brazilian middle blocker just playing for different universities. Parapunov going high flat. Hawaii's rolling right now. Yeah, Charlie Wade made a good point earlier today in chatting with us. He said, look, we're not just counting aces. It's not about getting clean points. It's about turns. How many swings do you get from the service line? You're hitting some spots, putting your other opponent in trouble. And that is what Hawaii's doing right now. They took just a little bit off from the early part of this set. They have kept all the other aspects of their play. They started serving in more. You see BYU again struggling in reception, and the result is a commanding Hawaii lead. Yeah, this is a big lead. And once again, you look at the numbers, 379 in terms of offensive efficiency, and 16 kills for Hawaii to only eight for BYU. BYU has had passing troubles in the championship. It's not the same group, but they have had historically problems in the championship match. And if you think, 
A lot of these players were on the roster the last time they were in the finals. I would start with winning one set if I'm BYU. They are 0-6 in their championship appearances, got swept twice. So right now you got to think about one set, this moment and the next set, versus anything about a championship. That was in 2016 and 2017. Both of those championships won, and congratulations to the Ohio State Buckeyes. Once again, the seventh tournament appearance all time for Hawaii. Runner up in 2019, as I mentioned, and also 1996. Did win the 2002 title over Pepperdine, but later that was vacated by the NCAA fourth ever championship match. And again, the second straight. No, no, no. Everyone knows who won. I just said, everyone, I just said Hawaii beat Pepperdine. Won. Yes. That, that's a stupid asterisk. Coming out of the timeout. Oh, there's going to be a touch into the cross court. That is a break that time by Eschenberg. And you're right. Right now, Hawaii is certainly winning the, the receiving phase of this opening set. Yeah, maybe Eschenberg can do something about it. He gets skill here. He'll go back to the line. That is a nice swing high over. And Eschenberg had that kind of spin down in front of you serve in the semis. Nearly got it there, but it's perfect instead. Right on the sideline, once again, Guillerme Vos. The 6'7 freshman out of Rio de Janeiro, a freshman All-American for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, giving them a real punch in the arm. Set points now for Rado Perapunov. If I'm Rado, I've had a nice start to the match. I'm ripping it full speed here with this lead. Hammer it. Well, there's a big margin for error here with four set points. Yep, yeah, tries to go for it, and misses that one into the net. Actually, I think he got a little conservative with it. That was not a full swing. Might have been a bad toss for him. He had to back off. I would have wanted to see a toss in front and jump and hammer that thing. That's a good moment for him to gain confidence. Instead, I think his toss was a little off. John Stanley will come in. He's an outside hitter, but he came in against Santa Barbara, and he has got a full quiver of serves. Very unique style, but he's also got the ball that drifts out of bounds over the end line. And a pretty good set of mini runs for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, and they take the opening set, Kevin, 25-21. I think it's an ideal start for Hawaii. Team effort carrying the day. If they keep serving in and playing the way they have, it'll be quick, and Green will win. Back in Columbus, set one goes to UH, but it wasn't UH early. It was BYU stuffing a few balls. Looked like their size and their movement into that three-man block might pay off, but UH able to stay in system throughout much of this set, and a nice hot start for Rado Parapunov. Five kills on nine attempts, 333, and integration with the middles. Hawaii running all their tools, and when you're in system like that, they are difficult to deal with. If they continue to handle the BYU serve, it's going to continue to be advantage Charlie Wade and UH. The 2019 National Coach of the Year. Both of these teams wanted to get back at one another. It's been a tremendous rivalry through the last couple of years, and particularly going back to 2020. We talked about that. BYU won at the Stan Sheriff Center. Doesn't happen very often. Ended that long winning streak. And then Hawaii came back in just a titanic contest the very next night, won at 1917. In the fifth, and here we are. These two teams, BYU the number two seed, Hawaii the number one seed. Playing for the 2021 National Championship. You have to love the volleyball cultures on both campuses. They pack it out at BYU, 5,000 plus fans. BYU TV does a terrific job with their coverage of it. And of course, in Hawaii, no pro sports. This is their pro sport. Men's volleyball, women's volleyball. As you see, Tele, the lefty, he will be aggressive whenever he can. Referee letting him play and been doing so consistently on both sides. And, and, really, and really I love letting him. Yeah, let, me let too. Let go. Parapunov, that did get a piece of the block, although the coaching staff is saying, no, we have not had a challenge as yet. Nice dig by Stanley. Eschenberg looking to go high hands, didn't get over the top of that, and missed it into the cross-court corner. Yeah, in Hawaii, without pro sports, I was out there watching the Big West tournament, enjoying my time on the islands there in Lanakai, and... They're running commercials for the high school games, the high school championships on regular sports television. It is outstanding. It is fantastic. Bravo, Hawaii, and your fandom of this game. Tele with the service winner goes down as an ace. Yep, 
Jacob Tele. That's his 16th ace so far. He's very efficient. 16 aces, 15 errors. That's a tremendous number for the sophomore. And so far, Hawaii has been quite efficient at applying pressure to their opponents. That's what happened with UC Santa Barbara. That's what's happening right now with BYU. BYU's got to find a way to try and regather some momentum. Good stab by Worthington. Oh, what an angle. Good comeback that time by Eschenberg. That was just inside the three-meter line. And how about the delivery from Stanley? He's all the way in the right front. A lot of players just lay it up. You have that big opposite arm right there. Garcia Fernandez was in the front row. Instead, he fires this thing, takes a step back, and Eschenberg hits a beauty of an angle. That was inside of Gassman. Here comes Garcia Fernandez. The serve has been handled very well so far by Hawaii. Eschenberg again ripping into the cross court. Same swing, and right now Pat Gassman is telling his pin blocker in this case, Colton Cowell, not to go so far outside. And this is row one. We talk about row one in side out context, but in a blocking context too, Colton Cowell never blocks on the right side, but in this one rotation, and only when you don't side out. Hawaii efficient in side out generally. There's no reps over there. Off the top of the tape, nice save by Gassman. Pretty good swing by Galloway. Eschenberg again, three kills in a row. And smart setting by Will Stanley to keep exploiting that matchup in row one. And go with the hot hitter. I love streaking a hitter like this, Eschenberg. And Eschenberg this time, he's hit two angle. Where does that one go? Through the hands on the line, even though he had some line. You see number 19, Parapunov, is the opposite. He would normally, in, in, in the other rotations, he'd be out on the right side, but instead it's Colton Cowell at only six foot one. And he keeps your best server at the line. And that, oh, that ball was very, very close. The BYU coaching staff looking at that. We haven't had a challenges yet. Each team gets three challenges in the match. And uniquely to men's college volleyball, if your challenge is upheld, you keep it. So you basically have an infinite number. And his whole team telling Sean Olmstead, no, no, that was in, don't, don't challenge. He asked the question, like, no, it was in. A serve coming off the kill by number 24 in white. So Colton Cowell made a smart swing on that last one. Let the ball drop a little bit, pushed it to the end line deep. And here it comes back with the swing and the serve right down the gap between two receivers. What an athlete. This year a second time team All-American. Not bad for the former walk-on. Quickly into the middle and good response by BYU. Perfect pass. I like the idea from Colton Cowell. Smart volleyball to try and cut it. He's just not able to cut it short enough. The other thing you can do is you can cut it across your body. That shortens it a bit, too. You can spin it into that 1-2 spot right about the 10-foot line. Here is Eschenberg, who's been really good offensively. We'll give you his numbers in a moment as he misses that serve. Five of eight so far for Eschenberg. Gabby Garcia Fernandez, three of ten. And I would say only three of ten. That's pretty quiet so far. He was the 2020 National Player of the Year. Otto Parapunov, congratulations to him. The senior out of Bulgaria, he was this year's AVCA National Player of the Year. Gassman, who's been pretty quiet so far. Parapunov ripping into the cross court. Oh, Gassman's hitting a thousand. Uh, he is. He's one for one. Yeah. <laughs> and when I played Little League, I was one for one, and then they told me to go sit down. But it's surprising, as well as Hawaii's been passing, that he's only had one opportunity. Little known fact, Paul Sunderland benched in Little League, would later win a gold medal. Hmm. Who's your he, coach? He's out of the game now. Guillerme <laughs> Vos. Guillerme Vos, on the other hand, opposite of Gasman, is four of five. That ball off of the aforementioned Vos and out of bounds. Nice response for BYU, trailing by one. Chaz Galloway's three of four. That is a nice bounce back match for him. And that is missed out of bounds. That's a great point, Kevin, because I think that was really a concern because. UC Santa Barbara is not the most physical team in the country by any measure, and he did. He really struggled. I mentioned that three out of 13 with four errors, 
but off to a nice start. Well, Santa Barbara did a nice job of serving him and has done a nice job of putting a lot of pressure on the now what, second year freshman, COVID era freshman. Yep. Garcia Fernandez just just too strong for the block. That was a well-formed block, and he was just too good. Well, you can see it's just another level when he hits the ball. There are plenty of players out here with a lot of heat. No one has the heat that Gabby has. It's his arm mechanics, it's his strength, and that time giving direction to the ball. Not just go and see, this goes off the inner side hand, the right hand of the middle blocker. Stanley, good serve down the line, but handled by Galloway. Jazz Galloway at only six foot three, but you were talking to him the other day before the semifinal. He touches 11, 10 and a half. So at 6'3, maybe he touches standing. 8'2 if he's got long arms. You do the math. Uh, you can see how he flies. It is next level, even in a game that has a lot of big jumpers. Chaz Galloway is the biggest. He's done a nice job playing uh, middle back defense as well. He's had a couple of nice saves. His sister played volleyball at the Air Force Academy. Four. My younger brother, Keith Barnett. Chaz Galloway, four for five. Guillerme Vos, four for five. That is really good news and efficiency for Hawaii. Gassman has been quiet so far. Parapunov doing his thing. Gardini is roof. Vos again. This is a good play by both Gardini and UH. Gardini, to be aggressive on that ball, it's popped up, go and get it. You'd like to see him hit it higher, but a nice reaction from the UH block as well to get in front of him. Hanging inside, you can see how far Colton Cowell is inside. He's in that bunch read. They're going to give Gardini some space on the right side, a lot of it. Gardini again, able to get that ball somehow down inside Cowell and Vos. Right now, Hawaii is really strong in both serve and receive. Much better than BYU. Vos was too far off the net. He made that big move, and then he didn't seal the net. That thing just went right down the front of him. And Gardini misses that badly. We'll get you the serving numbers. Remember, Hawaii missed a ton of serves in the opening set, and they still won it 25-21. They missed six. Yeah, well, it's 6-6 six, six right now. BYU yeah. has started to match them. I think in, in an effort to get Hawaii out of their offense, they're trying to serve harder, and they're missing. BYU has to handle the ball better. That ball blocked, but out of bounds. Wow, just out of bounds. The Hawaii blockers, Gassman, Cowell as well. They want to Along. talk about a challenge. Charlie Wade's going to consider it here. They thought that the ball hit by Eschenberg off the left side hit him on the way out of bounds. Charlie Wade's thinking about going to the challenge card. Yeah, you not only have to weigh, should I challenge or not based on a, a critical play, but do I want to break momentum of my team? You're up 10-8, you're siding out, let it go. I think it's a good move by Charlie Wade to not get in the weeds. What a wonderful save by Tele. We saw a number of those the other night in Hawaii's win over Santa Barbara. That is just a wonderful delivery high above the top of the tape going to Gassman. Yeah, you as a hitter come up there and it's perfect like that. It is scrumptulescent. Good block again. Remember how tough Hawaii was, and now they've got Parapunov out on the right side with Gasman. I would call a timeout. I was going to just ask you if BYU needs a timeout. Each team does get two, and there it is. Timeout called by head coach Sean Olmstead. Hawaii up one set to none, and now Hawaii with all the momentum on top 12-8 here in the second. And BYU turn this around. Hawaii is white hot right now.
Coming up tomorrow on ESPN2 at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 out on the West Coast over on ESPN2. We'll have the NCAA Beach Volleyball National Championship match from Gulf Shores, Alabama. You can always watch streaming live on the ESPN app. From anywhere, USC has already advanced into the finals, and they will take off on either Loyola Marymount University or the two-time champion UCLA Bruins. That's coming up tomorrow. Back with Kevin Barnett and Paul Sunderland, and Yakatele once again continues the hot play. And I asked you during the timeout if you were surprised by how much BYU is struggling in the receiving phase. I am. I really am. I thought this was a different team. This looks like another repeat in terms of serve reception for BYU at Ohio State in a national championship match. But they knew it was going to be the toughest test so far. Halfway through, they're going to hope to do better on the math portion than they've done on the previous half. A really good read that time by Chaz Galloway, who's been very impressive. The freshman from San Diego is four of five. Perfect, no errors. Guillerme Voss, four of five, no errors. Gassman, two of two. 10 of 12 with no errors between those three players. 14 to eight is the advantage. Eschenberg tries to answer and misses that long. No touch off the block. Does this look familiar? A second set controlled by Hawaii where the other team has to use both of their timeouts by the midway point. This looks like the semifinal. 15 to eight and now BYU is out of timeouts. It's all about serve and receive. It always has been Hawaii with four aces. The six service errors, Kevin, and we talked about it. All six of those came in the opening set, and in spite of that, they still won at 25-21. They're hitting 390 to only 200, and they have 21 kills to 17 now for BYU. So Sean Olmstead, one of the best in the business. How, do, how does BYU turn this thing around? Start passing. You're going to have to pass first. I wouldn't worry about anything else except pass, and then you are who you are. That's what... Sean told us, right? You are who you are coming into this match. So don't do anything fancy. Don't go away from what you've been doing. You set your guy. You start to get Gabby going. But without a pass, there's not much you can do. We saw what Hawaii is capable of when they're keeping teams off the net. Their block is soft touch all day, and then they ram it down your throat in transition. There is Charlie Wade in his 12th year in the 2019 finals, and now in 2021 again, Milan Zarkovic. Originally from Serbia, his son played for the Rainbow Warriors and now an outstanding coach, the ABCA National Assistant Coach of the Year and one of the nicest, friendliest, most gregarious, fun-loving, volleyball-loving people you're ever going to meet. He's done a wonderful job training this Hawaii team. Coming out of the timeout, Jakob Tele, 15-8 advantage. Was looking at Gabby Garcia Fernandez. It seems like he's got to start hitting BYU out of some of these tough situations. Now, these are tough situations indeed. Another bad one. Got the ball on Tele. Everything going Hawaii's way, and they're earning all of it. Gage Worsley, for the third time, the Libero of the Year in college volleyball, dishes up a perfect set to Parapuna. I was trying to think of a top shelf left handed hitter in the MPSF. You didn't really see one this year. The Big West has several left-handed attackers, the best of whom was Rado Parapunov. That block overran that set. Eschenberg slicing off a tight angle, but nicely dug once again by Cal. Combination playing finally on the quick back row. Combination able to get out of that rotation as Garcia Fernandez goes back to serve 40 aces on the year. He could use a couple right now. Yeah, in the women's game, that play was already called. They wouldn't like that second contact. It's called too tightly on the women's side. I agree with you that. Need to, you need to bend more towards the men's. Just be consistent. Establish a baseline and then just go from there. Just get rid of the double. Goodbye. We don't need you anymore. Yeah, just no because, lifts. Just but because it comes out a little funky looking doesn't mean you gained an advantage at all. Just let him play on. No. If Tom Brady throws a ball, it's not a spiral. The referee doesn't blow the whistle. Sorry. That pass not good enough. Sorry. Stop play, please. And that ball missed out of bounds. 
So Garcia Fernandez, once again last year's ABCA National Player of the Year, cannot, BYU just cannot string together anything positive right now and give all credit to Hawaii. They're playing better in every phase of the game. Eschenberg's having to take a lot of tough swings, stuck by Worsley, right on top of the net. Will Stanley at six foot four, skying to hammer that ball to the floor. Look at Worsley. Worsley was hanging in. We talked about volleyball families, of course. Joe, older brother to uh, Gage Worsley, a star setter for Hawaii for a couple of years, and in that national championship match. That's what BYU needs. That's their style, dishing the ball to Garcia Fernandez. Just a steady diet of Gabby Garcia Fernandez. That's what you need right now. Pass the ball, but set this guy for points. Shouldn't matter. Everyone in the gym knows he's getting the ball. Shouldn't matter. Still be a kill. Perfect pass. Northington keeping the ball alive, and somehow off the top of the tape, that ball got between Gassman and Parapuno. I like the momentum for BYU. I like them getting a little bit of positivity here. I'm surprised this match has been such a one-sided affair for the last set or so of action. And Char Charlie Wade recognizing exactly the same thing. Momentum now to a, at least a minor degree on the side of BYU, and Hawaii wants to slow things down. Second set, Hawaii up one set to none, and 17-12 here in the second. Teams back out on the floor here at the Cavelli Center, the 2021 NCAA Men's Volleyball National Championship match. Back with Kevin Barnett, looking at some of the offensive uh, production so far for Hawaii. What strikes you? Chaz Galloway hitting 800. The middles for Hawaii hitting north of 700. And Colton Cowell, he's hitting 133. However, he had all those tough chances earlier. Took some aggressive swings, made some plays that I like overall. His hitting percentage suffers because of that only. He just hasn't gotten many balls lately. The offense has gone elsewhere, but he's doing other things for the team, like making a pass here. Kept alive, but out of bounds. A good swing by Parapunov to get Hawaii ahead in the point. Colton Cowell with the perfect pass. He also has two aces. This is what you have to do. I like the way Colton has played the match, even though if you looked at just the stat sheet, you wouldn't think, oh, that's an off night. Colton's not doing anything positive. No, he's doing a lot of positive for his squad. I even like the ones he got blocked on. Five kills, two service aces, three digs, and a block. And in 2019, when Hawaii lost at Long Beach, I thought he was the best player on the floor for Hawaii that match. And those matches we talked about in Hawaii, Colton did not play. He was injured at the time he was out. Yeah, an incredibly strong kid. Talk. I said, what are you going to do if you, if you are playing volleyball because he wants to go and play professionally overseas after his career here? What would you be doing? He goes, eh, beach volleyball? <laughs> that was his next choice. <laughs> he'd be an outstanding beach volleyball he player. Would. Obviously, he's, he's done it his fair share of it, but I think he'd be one of those defenders be tough to stop inside out and transition. Remember, a former walk-on been playing volleyball for Hawaii after a red shirt year. Nice play by Garcia Fernandez, but speaking and finishing the thought on Colton Cal from Maui. He's been on campus since 2015-16. He'd like to finish it with a championship. BYU's back in this set. They're only down four. John Stanley to serve. Perfect pass right on target, and Vos dug this time. Tara Punoff high up into a three-man block and out of bounds. Rado should go for it here. Get himself in rhythm. Throw up a nice high ball in front of himself. Get after it. Don't be conservative. The Hawaii fans and the bullpen for the Rainbow Warriors encouraging him mightily. Very good serve. Outstanding. Chaz Galloway after a really good read and chase by Gage Worsley. 
Five of six from Chaz on the outside. You always feel as an outside hitter, you come up one-on-one -on -one in the men's game, no reason that shouldn't be a kill. It's your fault if it's not a kill. It's any kind of reasonable set. 20 to 14 is the advantage. Karapunov again, ripping that. Look at that. Eschenberg, it just ate him up. Someone get Rado Parapunov a Rasta banana, please. <laughs> he just shot the carnival duck dead. Fifth service ace for Hawaii and Parapunov. And speaking of this year's National Player of the Year, he'll be leaving on Monday to go to Bulgaria to play for his national team. Eschenberg out of the lineup being replaced. Taylon Jonathan Tafuga. And it, it matters not. The serving is just lighting up the reception right now at BYU. You knew it would be your toughest test. You need increased communication, and you have to move for this ball. You have to pop it up 10 feet off. Don't make a perfect pass. Keep it on your side for now. Oh, another ace. It looked like he missed that one. That and he got the out. ace. Yeah, it looked like it was going out of bounds. BYU is completely out of sorts. And give Hawaii all the credit for it. They are transitioning. They're playing defense and working it from the service line. As a big jump server, somebody gives you one of those, you come back even harder with the next one. And this is that left-handed bend. You hate to see this. You never see this from right to left reception. You don't get that. That's why lefties are dangerous, especially big hitting lefties, because that ball tails away from right to left. Most right-handers, when they hit it, and as a receiver, you're used to seeing balls go from your left to your right only. Rare is a, a right-handed attacker that serves from that side and hits it away. Big lead here for Hawaii, looking to go up two sets to none. A serve there for Stanley. That was a perfect serve into the deep cross-court corner. Yeah, I'll put some nails in the coffin back there. Go ahead and... Put that one on the ground. Just the second ace so far against seven for Hawaii. Second ace for Stanley and BYU. Yeah, I said they were back in it trailing forward just as quickly as that happened. Rado Parapunov said, you are not back in this set. And that ball missed out of bounds that time by Cal. But to your point, I don't like that set at all. No, I, I that's was a terrible too, selection. I completely agree. I don't know why you're going to Cal in that situation. Kind of a medium the, pass. He had lots of options. It's the positioning on the floor. He's pushed into position four, right in front. And he throws it right up in front there. More of a, uh, not really an A, more of a B ball. It's a weird set in a weird spot with poor timing. You got to throw it long distance to your opposite. Well, then you had Galloway out on the left, and you've got Parapunov on the other way. Right, two hot hands, yep. and you dump a, a bad set to your guy who hasn't had a set for most of this set, which now we hate volleyball, right? <laughs> Use the word set too much. In this game. 24 to 17, that error aside, it certainly didn't do any damage because Hawaii had carved out such a comfortable and large lead. Wow. Set point number one. BYU is gonna have to do some serious regrouping. Kept off the floor. Nice play by Gardini. Yalhi Ainen out of the middle, wearing number 18 in blue for BYU. Set point number two. Jakob Tele has got to rein it back in a little bit. He was absolutely superb the other night when Hawaii took out UC Santa Barbara three sets to none. A little bit erratic here in the second set. Good Galloway pass the ball. Off the edge of the block and down, but still several set points for Hawaii to take a two sets to none lead. Good pass by Worsley. Yeah. Cowell through the block and down, and Hawaii goes up two sets to none for the NCAA championship.
25 to 19. They got up to 12-8 lead, and after that made it look easy, Kevin Barnett. Yeah, and I like that set right there to Colton Cowell. You want to get him back online. You want to give him a moment to shine. Do it when he's in rhythm and has a full approach. Colton Cowell in Hawaii won away from a title. We'll have another NBA Sunday afternoon doubleheader for you on ESPN and the app, both with big time playoff implications. Jimmy Butler in the heat in Boston to take on Jason Tatum and the Celtics at 1 Eastern. Then Julius Randle, who's been playing wonderful basketball for the New York Knicks against Kawhi Leonard and Paul George and the Clippers. Our coverage begins with NBA countdown at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Rado Parapunov headed off back to Bulgaria on Monday, but he has been doing some work on this Saturday night in Columbus. 333, three aces, two blocks, eight kills. This is the Rado they needed. This is the Rado they all knew was there, that they were missing against UCSD. They were missing until the last few points of UC Santa Barbara. This is the guy who's National Player of the Year showing you all the skills and why he has been an integral part in the success of the Rainbow Warriors. Averages just over, just under four and a half kills per set. Number three in the country hit 327. A huge number for an opposite three-time first team All-American. Take us over to BYU side, Kevin. How do they possibly dig them? They, what do they have little at a time? Where do they where do they go to start playing better? They got it, and they're a very good team. Same thing. Pass. You're not passing the ball. You're completely at the mercy of UH hammering on the serves. And so what you have to do as a receiver, you have to find a space to fall back in. What do you do? I used to think of it as play the ball, don't let the ball play me. So I would make a definite move toward the ball rather than trying to respond to what the ball is doing or letting it climb up on my platform or my body. Get out of the way or get to it and pop it up on your side. 8, 10 foot is fine to start in this set before you start thinking about are we in a perfect pass position. If you're BYU, get a quality swing each and every time. That was not even a tough serve. No, and that's a mental side of the game. BYU right now is frazzled. Absolutely frazzled. Eighth ace, that one by Jakob Tele, but going back to the second set, which Hawaii dominated, five aces, only two errors. They won that second set easily. They need, he needs a cut here. Going back to Worthington, the Libero. Quality swing, but outside Eschenberg is slow. That ball thrown down through the block by Patrick Gassman, 6'10 senior out of Clovis, California. So he's 405 and Voss is 407. Right, he'll take that all day long from your middles. And look at Chaz Galloway, the young freshman outside hitter. A lot of pressure on him to be effective. Five of six so far in this national championship match. But look at the offense. Eight kills, six kills, five kills, four, four. That is a spread out offense. That's a center performance. Nicely done into the cross court. Gabby Garcia Fernandez. And of course, BYU could use a lot more of that. Yeah, Rado should have popped that one. He, he wants that one back. He lipped a few of those against Santa Barbara in the semis. Had 11 digs in that semifinal match, and that was only in three sets. There he is, number 19. Mickey Yauhiainen back to serve. On the pipe, back row, quick combination, and what runway is that? Clearly from runway 12, flight number one, Chaz Galloway. Go ahead. Full throttle. Cal, that slowed off the top of the tape, and wow, BYU is in complete disarray right now. There have been some tremendously high quality serves from Hawaii, but now BYU is missing some that aren't even that tough. If you're Sean Olmstead, you're out of things to do. Your team has to figure it out. Good block touch by Gassman. Oh, and right back at you. Beautiful. That's the two biggest guys on the floor going at it. <laughs> Love it. You see Brito Fajeda at six foot nine, slowing down the gas man. Yeah, but he's 6'9", 250, against 6'10", 265 unofficially at the NFL Combine, I heard. Boy, that was a really good block, technically. 
Gibreto Ferreira was way over the net. Look at the pass by Worsley, and you gotta love that if you're gas man with Tille, Tille going right back to him. Love a repeat setter. As a hitter, you love a repeat setter. And Patrick Gassman has not gotten it going from the service line yet. Look out. This morning in warm-ups, he looked more comfortable than I've seen him all week. 15 aces on the year. He does make a lot of errors. 49 in the negative column. And that on cue does miss that one. But Hawaii still leads it 5-4. Yeah, I think Pat just has a short window. He has a really small window to hit with that jump serve toss. And so that toss a little too far in front. He tries to drive it, it goes in the net. He has to have the perfect toss in order to hit that ball. He just doesn't have the same capability as some of the outsides in order to hit weird balls and weird tosses. Let me back that up just a little bit. Beautiful swing, 5-3. Now make it 6-3. Hawaii on top. We weren't with us for first serve. Number one seed, Hawaii, taking on number two seed, BYU. BYU has won three national championships. Hawaii did win over Pepperdine back in 2002. Hawaii won the opening set 25-21 and easily took the second 25-19. Karapunov has been really good. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside, kept alive, and almost a wonderful sprawling play by Tele to give the kill to Eschenberg off the left. BYU now hanging tough. They've steadied out a little bit over the last couple of plays. Excuse me, that was Gardini, of course, wearing number one in blue for BYU. Eschenberg with a nice pass. Not a good-looking jump serve there, and kind of a predictable result. That ball not tossed properly. 7-4 is the advantage. Jazz Galloway, Kevin, has been absolutely superb. Six of seven. Playing defense, serving the ball well. They're doing a good job of hitting Gardini. And blocking Gardini, free ball to the floor by Tele. Said, I like the offense Tele is running. Now he's inserted himself into that offense. A little Jeff Stork for you. Wow. Throw it all the way back to just the post-Paul Sunderland era. <laughs> what a tremendous weapon. Left-handed, smart, athletic, and six foot six in BYU. Wow, once again, just cannot handle Hawaii, at least for now. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup standings as teams compete for a combined $400,000 in student athlete scholarship donations from Capital One. Alabama on top, followed by Stanford, Michigan on the men's side, and Stanford also there as well. Kentucky after their first ever national championship. Congratulations to Craig Skinner and the Wildcats on that championship win, and they are currently in second place, and Hawaii is absolutely rolling. Smart serve from Chaz Galloway. That was a half cut. A lot of spin going to one side. Variation again, exactly what Charlie Wade talked about. It's about turns, not just aces. Hawaii's got both. How surprised are you right now at how this match has gone? Nine aces. I'm shocked. Absolutely shocked. Good joust by Cal. He'll get the swing. Goes high flat. Nice cut inside the block that time by Garcia Fernandez. You can see BYU doing anything they can to try and get back on track. Three guys go to get this ball off the top of the block. There are three players right there. Everybody trying to make a play to try and get the men in blue back into the groove. Garcia Fernandez doing his part. Nine of 19, hitting 368 now as a team. Feed him. BYU is hitting 305. Another wonderful pass. Vos with yet another kill, and he's staying almost perfect. Five kills now on eight swings. Has not been stopped, has not missed a ball out of bounds. Okay, we've talked about six of seven for Chaz Galloway, and the overpass last trip to the service line. He's also passing the ball well. Yeah, Chaz playing a complete game in this biggest of moments for a second year freshman.
Block touch again, transition opportunity. Gardini, what a cover by Worthington, but you can't get there if you're BYU. Gassman with a block, along with some help from Colton Cowell, number 24 in white. Colton Cal is the only guy they can get to offensively right now at BYU. So Colton's finding other ways to contribute to this winning effort. Good spot with the left arm. Oh, that is a rip once again by Garcia Fernandez, but just not enough help. Kevin, you played internationally, collegiately. You were an All-American at Pepperdine. Played for a long, long time. There are just some matches when you feel like you're stuck in the mud and everything takes double or triple effort. That's what the body language and the energy looks like to me from BYU. Right, Hawaii's done it to him. It's exactly, not, it's not exactly right. BYU. It's not self-inflicted. No, it is Hawaii absolutely taking it to the Cougars thus far. Even the Cougars, you have talent, but you're going to have to start with the pass, and I would just lean on Gabby for a little bit. Let everybody else relax a little bit. Tell your team, pop it up somewhere in the middle. We're going to feed Gabby for a little while, and until someone can really shut him down, we're going to give him the ball. And that will hopefully let us work our way back. There's plenty of time in this set. You're down six. It's huge, but it's not insurmountable. Parapunov and Garcia Fernandez, ex ex identical numbers, 10 of 20 with two errors. Good pass off the block deflection back to Garcia Fernandez, and that ball is on the floor. Who got the ball twice in that rally there? Even when he was inside, Will Stanley set him, even though he was all the way to the inside. And that's the improvement in footwork from a freshman year to a senior year, is where you can do that to the right side, take those steps, and bang the ball down. 12-7. Hawaii on top, two sets to none, and leading in the third, Yohiainen on to serve. And Parapunov, nice stab in the backcourt by Gardini. And Eschenberg finds the sideline. That's the best transition play by far we've seen from BYU on the match. Just keep grinding. Just keep grinding. Hopefully a couple other guys can get on track. Gardini can get out of the shank tank. And you can start to run your offense a little bit. They're going to have to come inside on that block. Again, row one for UH. Can't keep leaving that much cross court for Eschenberg. On the pipe. Chance again for BYU going quickly into the middle, dug by Worsley. Dug by Stanley. That was a rip by Galloway. Ball hit out of bounds. How about the unusual free ball placement there? Everybody shoots a free ball to right back. Gardini threw it to left back, and Gage Worsley was looking for the short one. He was already running up when that ball was set over. Watch Worsley, middle of the screen. He's going to come charging up, and Gardini almost sets it over his head for a kill, and at least keeps Hawaii off balance enough to generate the error. Easy serve to Worsley. Oh, that ball might have been going out of bounds. Gardini trying to stab that ball and keep it in play, but deflected it away from his teammates. I think, uh, I think John Costi put a couple of quarters in the speed gun. I saw a number fly up there. Uh, uh, we well, might have about 10 minutes of it. I'm not sure what 50 cents is worth now. We'll have to make take a little closer look. The speed gun has been working in the semifinals. We haven't had it so far tonight. Here is Cal, and he comes up dry there. 13 to 10. Yeah, it is working 67 miles an hour, but straight to the net. Here's the, here's the one you want to read. And here's the guy that could serve him right back in, fully capable of three straight, Gabby Garcia Fernandez. I call him a senior because that's how many years he's played. He's actually only listed as a junior now. 40 aces on the year. Oh, nice read once again by Will Stanley. That's twice. He's an athletic setter, just like Tele is for Hawaii. And he's a little angry, too. I like the tune with which Will plays. That's just an athletic reaction. He already backed up about a foot and a half, two feet off the net. Get after it, young man. Close to a timeout. Garcia Fernandez can score again here. He misses that one to the top of the tape. 
and a sigh of relief on the side for Hawaii. But you notice the Cougars scratching and clawing, scratching and clawing. Now just pop the ball up, pop the ball up. Non-perfect passes have been getting it done. Don't feel the pressure to make everything absolutely on a dime. Paintbrush and that ball put away by Gibreto Ferreira. Where did that ball get set from? Will Stanley set the middle in that gap from nine feet off the net. Just pump it up. Get your feet to the ball. Get your shoulders open if you have to. Get the platform out there. Attack the ball with the platform. Keep it in the middle of the court. Get a quality swing every time through. That's BYU's best chance to get back in this match. Perfect pass. And on the back row, quick combination, Colton Cowell unloading. Early on, Kevin, he had to take a lot of very, very difficult swings. He's now got seven kills on 21 attempts. And a nice pass and swing by Colton Cowell. For Hawaii, they're passing the ball in money, so they are in rhythm. BYU might cut the ball a few times if you have it. Serve some short balls. Make everybody move. Right now, Hawaii's just backed up and taking big runs at everything. Gardini is roofed. Fulls again. Firstly at the offensive end and now doing it defensively with a stop. Now Champions League block that time. Brazil and Norway teaming up. Against Italy. <laughs> Excellent. We talked, we talked about Parapunov soon to join his uh, Bulgarian national team. Get ready for international competition. Davide Gardini will be doing the same. Yeah, not a bad spot, and he hopes it's a stopover on the way to Tokyo. Yeah, it'll be a pretty hard bubble there for the BNL. All the matches to be played, men's and women's. A summer of volleyball coming for you for sure. That leading into Tokyo. Remember, we spoke with uh, Colton Cowell earlier today, talked about how tight this team was in the competitive culture. Very easy pass. And almost dug that time by Garcia Fernandez, but that was just, that was a lollipop. You know, a net violation anyway. It would not have mattered had he popped out one up. Yep, yep. You're running out of time, BYU. It's eight straight sets the Cougars have lost in championship play over the last five years. Garcia Fernandez misses that out of bounds, looking for a touch. And we're going to have our first challenge. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. You haven't used any. It's this late in the match. You're looking for anything. Absolutely. Three challenges per team, and uniquely to men's college volleyball. If you use a challenge and it is upheld, then you keep it. So you really have an infinite number of challenges as long as your players are honest and you got good eyes. If you're Hawaii, you know this isn't over. Because the last time you played, you were in this situation down 2-0. And you had to come back and win the reverse sweep, the three straight. Well, what I see there is a caterpillar, a 60 frames a second caterpillar. Yeah, I, I don't know how you possibly overturn the call Not on, from those two the, on the court. They have other angles. Yeah. They have in the replay yeah. system other yeah. angles to look at. I see nothing off the left hand of Colt Cow. I see no movement of his hand or fingers. And of course, volleyball players, notorious beggars. And liars. I mean, it goes both ways. It does. Yeah. It does. But the, the challenge system has made us more more honest because if you touch a ball, you got to tell your coach, you know, I touched it. You don't waste a challenge. I participated in the greatest comeback in Olympic volleyball history, probably down 20 to 12 in the fourth set, trailing two to one. We won in the fifth. Tom to Greece. Hoff, to Greece. In Greece. Tom Hoff touched the last ball that was 16 14 to win the match. No. The, the Greek middle hit the ball through Tom's hands. No touch called, no challenge system. Goodbye. Greek tragedy in the books. So this has been a, a huge change in the world of volleyball that you don't have to play it off or the referees miss it when you're in a home country somewhere. Being told it's confirmed as no touch. The call will stand. And it is 18-13. BYU now has two challenges remaining. Hawaii has yet to use one. 
And Chaz Galloway, six foot three freshman, averages a couple of kills per set, struggled quite honestly in the semifinals. He has been absolutely superb. Six of nine, no errors. That same cut serve. Nice swing over the top by Gardini. You're out of time. You need two points of rotation here. You need to climb back in by the 21 mark, or this is over. Hawaii is hitting a remarkable 397, BYU at 288. That's for the match. Yes, yes. Hawaii's hitting 474 in this set alone. I was getting to that. I mean, they were. They are, they are red hot through the first couple of sets. They are white hot here in the third, looking to close this out in a sweep and take the national championship trophy back to Hawaii. BYU, a must-have off the top of the block. Galloway stretched out. Fernandez going off speed. Karapunov all over that. Up into the block. Colton Cowell was in a very tough spot. Couldn't get his feet to the ball. It's not the right choice. Right, exactly. It's not the right choice. I understand the choice, but you have to go long distance again. And that's probably in the scouting report. How many long distance sets from 30 feet have we seen to the back? We have not. You're not throwing that ball back there, and you should have, because Colton was underneath at the net. That's a tough swing for him at already an undersized position. Gardini at the line. BYU must win situation. Good pass by Worsley again. And Petr Kunov putting some pop on that one. 11 kills on 25 swings. A lot of pressure coming in as the National Player of the Year, knowing you'd struggled a couple of times in some big moments. Yeah, but right here, this is this is simple volleyball. Nice choice from Tele. You have your guy right in front of you. He's having a good night. Leave it for him. Against three big blockers in blue. Eschenberg having to take a tough swing. Perapunov missed that just out of bounds, asking for a touch. None there, and it'll be 20 to 16 on that rare hitting air from number 19 in white. Milan Zarkovic wants a challenge, and he might get it here. He might get it. In fact, he is. Here comes Charlie Wade. Coach Zarkovic, the AVCA Assistant Coach of the Year on the men's side. He came over to Hawaii along with his son, Sinisha. Played for the team for a long time for, for his college career and now getting up at 2.30 a.m. to work on Wall Street before he goes to his job at Deloitte & Touche in the afternoon. There are not many challenges living in Hawaii. It's magnificent, it's paradise, but being a stockbroker in the islands is a tough one. Working third shift. So we have a challenge. Was there a touch on this attack by Perapunov? Oh, maybe. I saw. Watch the left hand. The left hand of Zach Eschenberg wearing number 11 in blue. That's what uh, Hawaii is contending. So we're looking at 60 frames. This is going to be 120 along the net from the R2 position. And they're able to pause, zoom in, pull out. They have a lot more access than we do. It was called out of bounds. Hawaii is challenging the touch. Hawaii is still leading two sets to none, 20 to 16. And Bill Forrester in the replay booth. Brian Hemmelgarn and the aforementioned Bill Forrester officiating this match. Boy, Hawaii has been so exceptional all night long. Won the opening set 25-21 in spite of the fact that they didn't serve very efficiently. And in the second set, they were really never challenged. They led it 12-8, went out to a big lead, and closed out BYU 25-19. Here in the third, a must-win situation for BYU. Hawaii got out to an 8-4 lead, 12-6. And we have, we're getting word from the scorer's table 
that uh, there is a net violation. They have combined now, when you challenge touch, you can also look at net violation as well. So ruled that Eschenberg was into the net. So the call is reversed. 21 to 15, Kevin Barnett. And the call being explained by the second referee to head coach Sean Olmstead. Yeah, this is this is over. The legendary Chick Hearn putting this volleyball match in the refrigerator. Wow, what a performance by BYU. It would take a miracle. It would like take an Athens-like miracle for BYU to come back in this one. I was expecting to be here for a long time. I was expecting 29, 27, 28, 26, 25, 23 in either direction, but you have to give Hawaii all the credit in the world. They're hitting 375, 100 points higher than BYU. Nine service aces to only two so far for Sean Olmstead and, and the Cougars. And remember, they missed those five serves in the first set. They weren't getting a return on it. Now it's nine aces, 11 errors. Absolutely getting a return. Nearly 10. Look at that. The wheels have completely come off. And going to be a timeout called by Sean Olmstead. You got to really feel for BYU. Obviously, yeah, they're an exceptional team, no doubt about it. But Hawaii has dominated the Cougars on this night. Coming up Sunday afternoon, we'll have an MLS doubleheader for you with Inter Miami hosting the Atlanta United at 1 Eastern. Then we'll take you to Providence Park for the next installment of the Cascadia rivalry, the 112th meeting between the Timbers and the Sounders. Both games are on ABC, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. And for all you soccer fans, check out ESPN FC on ESPN Plus every day. 22 Another to race. 15. Wow. Another race. An absolutely dominant performance by the Rainbow Warriors. Putting that one into the Bermuda Triangle. And again, no lefties in their gym. And the lefties have killed them. Jakob with four aces. Parapunov with three aces. Colton Cowles, the other, only other one with aces. He has three too also. Garcia Fernandez kept alive by Worsley. That's the right set. And a pun off to NCAA championship point. Good night now. It'll be the first championship for head coach Charlie Wade. Was in the finals in 2019. Championship point. Garcia Fernandez, number five, says not yet with his 12th kill. I'm going to Rado. He's on the left. You're in row one. Send him out with a bang. Exactly. Closing out his career, the National Player of the Year, three-time All-American for Hawaii. Or Colton. He's been there six years. He's on the right. There's not a bad choice in the front row. For the championship. Off the edge of the block and down, and Hawaii has won it. A sweep over BYU. BYU had the slight advantage. I thought we were in for an outstanding match. Instead, what we got was full throttle Hawaii. If Rado Parapunov played well, it was going to be Hawaii's match to lose. Well, he was exceptional. 357, three aces, two blocks, 13 kills, worthy of a national title. Just a tremendous, tremendous performance. For Hawaii, they win the national championship here in Columbus. You got a feel for BYU. 
You want to play your best when your best is required. And Hawaii was just too much for them, particularly on this occasion. I, I agree with you, Kevin. I have BYU with a very, very slight advantage. But, but Hawaii just, just took them out. Three straight sets made it look easy. Lefty service. Seven aces from the pair of le lefties, Jakob Tele and Rado Parapunov. They do not have that level of lefty in the MPSF. Grand Canyon U University has a lefty. That's it. There are no more. They had not seen that level of service. They knew it. They had not seen it, certainly from a lefty. Championship point once again. The gas man off the edge of the block, and the celebration is on. 25-21, 25-19, 25-16. Dominant performance by Hawaii. I don't know who's getting MVP. I would put Pat Gassman up there for his semifinal and his final performance because he checked in, didn't get that many opportunities here, but he's 7 of 11 with two blocks. Add that to what he did in the semifinal. It's a strong case for a middle to be most valuable player. Congratulations once again to the University of Hawaii, our national champions for 2021 in men's volleyball. We'll step aside momentarily. We'll be back with the trophy presentation and to talk to some of the Rainbow Warriors. They are now the champions. In straight sets, the top-seeded Hawaii Rainbow Warriors all over the second-seeded BYU Cougars in dominant and stunning fashion. Expected the potential of a classic, Kevin, and what it was was an unbelievable classic performance in every phase of the game by the winners from Hawaii. Number one team during the season lost in their conference semifinals. Some questions for me about whether they should be the number one seed. Their claim was they had only lost once. So the best way to do it is to face the number two in the championship match and absolutely dominate. A service line performance that will be talked about for a long time. Ten aces on 11 errors. What's even more, that's about nine aces on six errors because remember they were one ace on five early on and then absolutely went off with a variety of people from the service line, but mostly their lefties. Rado Parapunov, who picks up MVP honors for head coach Charlie Wade and also their setter, Jakob Tele. And you look at BYU on the other side, two aces. But you've got to think about how great, not good, and I don't use that word hardly ever how great Cal, Galloway, and Worsley were in receive. BYU was trying to put pressure on Hawaii, but those three receivers were just outstanding all night long, and uh, they dominated BYU in the serve and receive phase, and then everything builds off of that. Yeah, and Chaz Galloway, here's a kid who played last year, but he's back again this year. Sophomore season effectively six of nine, 667, no errors, no blocks, and dug five balls, got a big stuff block, and he was served a number of balls yeah. up to the task. And really good defensively playing center field in area in six, and Guillerme Vos, six of nine. The gas man, Patrick Gasman, in his final match for Hawaii, seven of 11. Over the last four matches, Gasman has hit just under 580. UC Irvine, and a grip of blocks UC too. San Diego, UCSB, yeah. and now here in the championship match. You think he draws some attention? Well, here's the bottom line. If you win a match like this against a team like BYU, everyone played well. And that's the case. A lot of good performances for Hawaii, great performances by Hawaii to deliver this championship. And what can't be overlooked, Kevin, is how good BYU is. They did not play well tonight but I think that was all about the Rainbow Warriors how exceptional they were in every phase of the game and obviously a very disappointed Sean Olmstead looking for the first championship since 2004 for BYU they'll finish the season at 20 and 4 but Hawaii was just that good yeah they were the best team in the best conference this year yeah the MPSF fine but it wasn't the dominant conference I think Big West was better top to bottom and Hawaii had been quite dominant until that semifinal fluke against UC San Diego, who is a quality team. 
Otto Karapunov, 13 kills on 28 swings, three aces, seven digs, a couple of blocks. He was chosen the championships. Most outstanding player. Congratulations to him and putting a, a crowning moment on a magnificent career. Three-time All-American for Hawaii. There's the second place trophy being awarded to Will Stanley, the outstanding graduate, senior graduate uh, setter for BYU. BYU's getting sick of those. Yeah. Third, third time. Yeah. 16, 17, 16, 17, and 21, and all three of them were three sets to none sweeps. And all three of them featured passing problems for the Cougars. And, and going back to uh, Ohio State, Ohio State dominated the serve and receive battle in those championships in 16, 17. Scherzen and Johnson. Yeah. Don't forget yeah. Miles Johnson. He yeah, was Miles also Johnson. ripping from the service line. Yeah. That team offered a lot of heat. Blake Leeson on that group. He was in stadium tonight to watch this championship match. Uh, Hawaii really did a number on it from the service line, but also, as you mentioned, in their own reception. And they put away every ball they, they had to. You get a free ball to Hawaii, they were putting it away. Soft touch turns. Uh, I was totally impressed with the performance of the Rainbow Warriors. No word on whether they'll be going to Champions League next year. Individual awards now being passed out to the champions. Jakob Tele, the six foot six sophomore from Norway, had a little bit of a little off patch, but we're really we're really nitpicking right now. He was playing with it because they had a huge lead exactly. in the second set. So exactly. He was trying to do a couple things. Exactly. That was about the only moment in the semis or the finals where he wasn't making excellent choices, turning on some balls himself, locating it well. A fine performance by Yaka. Tele, 36 assists, but more importantly, his team hits 488. When a team hits 488, wow. it's not just the hitters. Wow. The receivers was good, were good, but Tele was spectacular. And as you pointed out, the left-handed servers, you look at uh, Tele, he had four aces. Rado Karapunov had three. Just a, just not overstating the case, how nearly flawless Hawaii was. And, and, and that they would have to be that good in order to beat a quality team like BYU so handily. Colton Cal, his long career finally comes to an end. What's next in store? What a performance he had. Wonderful performance in a losing effort in 2019, and now he goes back to Maui. Not a bad place to go home to. Goes back to Maui with a national championship trophy. Huge round volleyball for that young man. Absolutely. Superbly talented, smart young man. A lot of Hawaii fans made a very long trip. Six hour time change, so it's about uh, now getting up on uh, 351 in the afternoon in Honolulu and the, the celebration is on. I did an interview yesterday on ESPN Radio in Honolulu. There was a lot of anticipation for this contest. Everybody over in the islands, some of the most knowledgeable fans anywhere and some of the most rabid fans. And they have great respect for BYU. They really expected a real battle and it was not. They love the game. They love these young men. They treat them like heroes. Yeah. Uh, the return will be that of a victorious squad in an Olympics, returning to Croatia or returning to another small country where they win an Olympic medal. This is very much like that for the islands of Hawaii. This will be celebrated for a long time and remembered forever. Well, there is the moment. Two outstanding teams battling for the ultimate prize in NCAA men's college volleyball. And Hawaii will be taking it back to the islands. And they left no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, three sets to none over BYU. We'll be back to talk to the tournament MVP, Rado Karaponov, after this short timeout. Quickly, a look back at some highlights. Kevin Barnett from the decisive and final third set. Yeah, the highlights are coming all on the Hawaii side. Even from the very beginning, we thought BYU might be able to get back on track with their reception, but early on, 
it was more tough serving from UH that set the tone. And they, they could do whatever they wanted. There was no wrong for them in this match. And that was the final point. Pat Gasman getting it. There were three of those guys, three of those extra time guys, seniors in the front row. Pat Gasman closes it for UH. And the banner, the final banner, because there's only one space, goes up for the University of Hawaii. Tremendous performance, dominant performance from start to finish. Rado Parapunov doesn't want to miss this. He's in with his teammates right now to make sure they get this final team photograph. But you see the scoring line. Again, Hawaii 381, 10 aces on the night. They just, they just controlled BYU in every phase of the game, particularly serve and receive. We mentioned it during the match. This wasn't a case of a team with self-inflicted wounds. Right. This was a case of a team inflicting wounds on their opponent early, consistently, and throughout the match. That is what this UH squad did. They took this championship. Absolutely. Took it in every sense of the word, every phase of the game. Gabby Garcia Fernandez closes out his uh, remarkable career with 12 kills on 28 swings. Those numbers tell the entire story. Just a wonderful performance in every phase of the game controlled if not dominated by Hawaii. Ten aces and three sets. Yep. Done. And only two for BYU. And as we talked about, look at the receivers. And Chaz Galloway was tremendous. Gage Worsley, one of the top Libros in the last decade, at least for uh, uh, for Hawaii. And then the other receiver as well, just doing a wonderful job, Colton Cal. We said coming into this match, it was about the serve and pass. It proved true. It's not a complicated game in many cases. Joining us now down courtside after taking a much desired photograph with his teammates, Rado Paraponov. Rado, first of all, congratulations. Wonderful performance. Talk to us about the matchup against BYU. Did you expect it to be this dominant a performance over such a quality opponent? I wouldn't say it was a dominant performance. I would say those teams are on extremely high level and the volleyball that's always on the court is just unmatchable. Uh, we studied them very well. We changed everything that we've been doing over the season so we can compete. We know that they analyzed us, we analyzed them, and we just gave them the respect. I think that's why the biggest reason that we end up winners is because we respected that team over the years. We thought, we knew that if we don't play better than our best, they'll beat us. Hey. Huge respect to Gabi, Davide, uh, Philip, all the senior. Will, yeah. Rado, your last two matches not statistically up to your standard. Coming into this match, where was your mindset in getting your offense going? Do you see that? What was different? Do you, do you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my answer. <laughs> it's Let a me tell you one thing. Whoever thinks about the stats doesn't get that one right here. It's about the heart. It's about your teammates. It's about doing your best. It's never about the stats. It's about this one right here. I lost it once. Second time, thankfully, I got it. Rado, we talked an awful lot about how tight your team was and how well a young player like Chaz Galloway played throughout the course of this match and also the other receivers in Worsley and Colton Cal. How important was their performance to how smooth you played tonight? Everybody you just came in uh, on their best. I mean, our outside Chaz and Colton, congratulations. BYU have one of the strongest serves in the country, maybe the strongest. So. We knew that in order to beat them, we had to win the serve-receive game. That was our focus there. And I think we executed on maximum level. Why is this team so close, Rado? We were talking to Colton, and he said that this team is closer than any group that he's had before. Uh, because I think it's a combination of people that have been here for way too long, five, six, <laughs> five six years, and the youngsters that will be like the future. I mean, the experience and then the young blood they have the, uh, the just I think it's amazing because first of all we lost one already we know what the feeling is and we told them if you don't like each other by now after you've been together for five or six years you got a problem Rado I know you're going back to Bulgaria on Monday this is going to be a pretty nice send-off congratulations thank you as a national champion tremendous performance by you and all of your teammates as thank well you. 
More volleyball coming your way tomorrow, ESPN2 at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific over on ESPN2. We'll have the NCAA Beach Volleyball National Championship match from Gulf Shores, Alabama, and you can always watch streaming live on the ESPN app from anywhere. USC in the finals, they'll take on the winner of LMU or UCLA. Kevin, your final thoughts. A dominant performance by the team that was ranked at the number one spot despite a semifinal blip. It might have been the best thing for them. Get that out of the way. Came to this event and dominated through six sets. They took the championship. They're every bit deserving of the title of national champions. Hawaii was on fire all night long from the very start. They win it three sets to none and are going back to Hawaii as national champions for our entire ESPN crew. My partner, Kevin Barnett, I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks so much for watching. Hawaii are the champs.